Thank you. OK, so in this example, if you guys remember the exponential function, when we went over the exponential function, the typical growth, as long as b is greater than 1, we know a is 1, so the graph crosses at 0, 1. And the graph would look something like this. Right? That was in your notes. That's what the exponential function, growth function, looks like when b is greater than 1. Obviously, the larger 3 is, or the larger the base is, the faster it you know, shoots up. The lower that number is, the slower it does that. But as long as it's greater than 1, it's going to be a growth function. Correct? All right, now if it's less than 1, then it becomes a decay. Or if you have inside the functions being multiplied by negative, that's also going to tell you it's a decay because that's a reflection of the y-axis. Good. So now, since that reflection, my graph looks like this. right? But what else is happening? I'm going minus 2. Well, the only point that I'm aware of is this 0, 1. So if I shift the graph down 2, because this minus 2 is not inside the exponent, so it's not going to the right 2. It's going down 2. Now, the other thing that matters is remember there's an asymptote here. So that asymptote's being shifted down 2. So now the graph looks something like this. Or maybe I'll do like red. So the red graph is the final graph, right? Yes? Because the fact that the y-axis is negative? Yes, inside. Because remember, if it was negative out here, it would reflect the x-axis, right? So then we just go and take a look. And out of all those graphs that we have there, which one looks like it most resembles that graph? A, B, C, D, E, F, B. So that would be your answer, B. OK? So you didn't actually have to graph it, but that's the way that I would like kind of do that in my head as far as visualizing what would be happening to the graph. Does that make sense?